if we stayed stagnant and status quo and just continue to do the same things over and over again and fail to innovate, we would become just like the eight track player and become obsolete. So I think it's so important that we try to stay ahead of the curve and remember that sometimes things that have always worked, things that were always tried and true, some things may always be tried and true and they will remain so because they are cornerstone. But there are also going to be aspects where doing a little bit of, you know, and everybody's going left and you go right is going to be something that could set you apart from the rest of the crowd. So I think that uh, innovation is going to be really, really important. What's up, you beautiful souls? Doran Aldana here with the one and only Penny Rightly for another Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Today, we're going to talk about creative prospecting. Finding leads where others aren't looking. So this is really cool because it's by necessity that we need to get creative because if we didn't have competition, if it was fair weather, if it was like everyone's fit, fat, and happy on the low-hanging fruit and it was easy, breezy, lemon, squeezy to get deals and leads, we would not be having this conversation. But as the saying goes, necessity breeds invention. So Super stoked to dive into this with Penny. Penny, how are you today? Great to see you. Thank you for having me, Doran. I am wonderful and so happy to be here. And likewise, this is uh, really cool because this is our second episode together. Although I should call it our third because we did a po podcast way back in the day when you were actually a student of, Pro easy for me to say, Planet Prosper. Apparently, my recollection of our time together way back then, which was like six, seven, eight years ago, my math is completely hazed. That's how far in the past it was. It's got me like muttering and stuttering, trying to figure out when that time was because it's crazy how time flies. But it's really cool to see how you've gone from being a student, applying a lot of the things we're going to be talking about today and being a living, breathing example of what we're going to be talking about today to now teaching it and teaching it from a place of here's what I did, here's what worked for me on the front lines of capitalism in the real world, which of course is the best and most powerful way to lead is leading by example and leading by not theory, not you know fluff or BS, but from stuff that actually works when you work it. So I can't wait to unpack this topic, creative prospecting. Why don't we kick things off with why is it so important? Why is it so mission critical for us to get creative and innovative? And what's the context of the mission critical necessity to bring innovation, iteration, and creative thought to our prospecting methods at such a time as this? Why now is it more important than ever to bring this creative approach to our prospecting? Great question, Dory. Great question. So I think you know, when we when we look at, you know, all of history and we look at all of time and look at innovation in general, when we're looking at that, you know, we look at, I take, for example, even looking at something like the 8-track and the record player and the cassette tape and the CD, all of those things have innovated, right? If we just stayed with, you know, the old record player and we're still driving around with record players. You know, I don't even know if record players ever went in a car. I don't think they did. But, you know, if they ever did, right? You know. With a VHS. Remember those big chunky things, the big VHS? You remember the like the, 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 the player, right? It just, <laughs> like, but and think back to those things. And, and so, you know, if we stayed stagnant and status quo and just continue to do the same things over and over again and, and fail to innovate, you know, we would become just like the eight track player and become obsolete. So I think it's so important that, you know, we try to stay ahead of the curve and remember that sometimes things that have always worked, things that, you know, were always tried and true, some things may always be tried and true and they, they will remain so because they are you know, cornerstone booth to business. But um, there are also going to be aspects where, you know, doing a little bit of, you know, and everybody's going left and you go right, you know, is going to be something that could set you apart from the rest of the crowd, right? So I think that uh, innovation is going to be really, really important. So I think today, specifically, with all the changes in the economy, anticipation of potential um, 
you know, recessions and rate drops, all those things. I think that as we see those things, that's, that's really what's, you know, the focus of why we need to innovate, right? As we see things coming down the pipeline and those potential changes that are, that are inevitable that are going to happen, we need to be able to be ready for that and make those changes. Yeah, we don't want to be the proverbial blockbuster video, right? Left behind because we're bleeding edge versus cutting edge and leading edge. So that is certainly a golden thread intertwined in everything we're going to be talking about today. And hopefully every episode on this podcast, that's our mission. That's our heartbeat. That's what we're all about. That's the ethos of what we're all about here on Planet Prosper. And of course, the challenges we're facing are real right now. For those who perhaps just stepped into the room on the front line of the capitalism as maybe brand spanking newbie mortgage professionals, and you literally got your license yesterday, and you're not fully acquainted to the climate uh, of where we're at right now, this is September 5th, 2024, if I recollect accurately. Give us a little bit of a glimpse just to remind ourselves of where we're at right now, Penny, in the mortgage business, the challenges we're facing such that the opportunity for us to get creative becomes self-evident. Let's just give everyone a little fresh reminder, some of the challenges we're facing right now. Definitely. Yeah. So as of um, September 5th, so yesterday in Canada, we saw an interest rate drop. Uh, with the key overnight lending rate, which is what directly affects prime rate here in Canada. So we saw a 0.25 interest rate drop. Um, there's a lot of discussion about uh, the Fed in the U.S. doing an interest rate drop this month. That's highly anticipated as well. Hasn't yet happened as of this recording, um, but certainly it is something that's highly anticipated and happening. So we are seeing um, you know, whenever we see interest rates drop, it's usually not because thing is sunshine and roses uh, from an economic standpoint. It's usually because there is, you know, things uh, there's there's pressure in the system. There is pressure on jobs. You know, there's job losses. There's stagnant things happening in the economy, meaning, you know, if interest rates are high, you know, businesses in general are not inclined to want to do a lot of hiring. They're not inclined to be doing overtime. They're not inclined to be doing a lot of those things. Consumer spending is down as well. So if consumers aren't buying things, companies aren't making things. And so when that happens, um, it causes a lot of, you know, stagnant activity in the economy as a whole. And so when that happens, it sparks, you know, levels of government to go, hey, you know what, maybe better lower these interest rates so that we can try and get, you know, the bus moving again, right? Um, the bus being the economy. And so um, that's really something that's, that's uh, happening right now um, as of this reporting. And so, you know, we really need to uh, be aware of kind of what's happening in the economy. And that's, that's why, you know, when we see people are not spending as much, interest rates are high. House prices are high in general, typically on, on all sides of the border. Nationally, from, you know, coast to coast, we're seeing higher house prices in general. Um, it's, you know, the general word on the street is what we're seeing. And so, you know, right now there's been some impact to, um, the job numbers as well. There was a lot of revisions with, uh, U.S. jobs numbers as well. I think there was an 818,000 revision to jobs numbers. Um, that was announced last month as well, which means basically they announced that there was 818,000 jobs created that actually never existed. Those jobs were never created. They didn't actually exist. That's almost a million jobs, right? And so if those jobs didn't exist and they don't really exist, then, you know, there was a much rosier picture of the economy painted than what it actually is right now. And because of that, that's what's going to spark the uh, drops in interest rates. And that's kind of where, you know, we're looking, well, okay, maybe the economy isn't quite as good as what we thought. And so that means that as more professionals, we need to really shop our pencils and take a look at every possible opportunity out there to continue to, you know, create leads for ourselves, continue to service our clients and, um, you know, and close business that we can because you know, people are not lining up the same way they were in 2020, where everybody 
to get a mortgage. Everybody had FOMO. Everybody wanted to buy rental properties. They wanted mortgages. They wanted to buy Airbnbs. They wanted to buy condos. They wanted cottages. All those things because interest rates were super, super low, right? Everything was great set um, back in 2020. That's not the case today. So we have to work a little bit harder uh, to find the right leads. So this discussion today is going to talk about how do we find those leads and how do we get them. So it should be a fun, fun chat today. Indeed. And the true test of the strength of a tree is not when it's fair weather. It's when the storm hits, right? So we've seen a lot of mortgage professionals tested over the last two and a half years. And unfortunately, most did not pass the test. Most of them got pa- caught with their proverbial pants down and got chewed up and spat out. You know, there's been a massive exodus of mortgage professionals on both sides of the border, unfortunately, over the last two and a half years. And it continues to this day. I just got a text from a client uh, who literally signed up for our program this week. And he's in such a desperate place. I think his wife just forced him to go back to work. So he literally was on the cusp of unlocking the code to the promised land. And because he was in such a desperate place, he decided to let that fear stop him. And here he is going back to the nine to five prison, working for the man, no freedom, no autonomy, no independence, all because it was like literally so desperate. He did not have a choice. The wife was on his, breathing out his neck. He had no choice, at least so he says. So the battle is real, y'all. The battle is real. So we want to make sure you're not one of those people that get chewed up and spat out, that you take market share while your competition is leaving the business. And of course, right now we're seeing lower volume across the board, lower revenue for most mortgage professionals, lower profit margins, lower net profits, fewer leads. Uh, You need to convert more, but it's not easy to convert more of these leads when you have fewer of them and there's such low inventory, as many of you know. So then you're battling with that piece, which means we need to build stability through diversification by having more leads from more sources so that even though you need more pre-approvals to get a deal under contract, you're still able to take market share. You're still able to not just survive, but thrive. And of course, just doing the same thing as everyone else is probably not going to be the answer. We got to be zigging while everyone else is zagging. And that means, of course, being creative. So therein lies the theme today. Let's talk about how to do exactly that. The solution to the problem. You guys know you're facing the challenges. The challenges are real. We're well acquainted. Welcome to the club. Now let's talk about how to actually win in the face of this challenging market and not just win as I like to say, in a fair weather market, but more importantly, in any market. That's the holy grail in this business is to win regardless of rates, inventory, hyper-competition, market compression, or inflation, to win in any market versus just a fair weather market. So part of that is being creative in your approach on how you're bringing in the business and diversifying yourself in those sources. So let's dive into the solution, shall we, Penny? Absolutely. What is the solution in a very succinct encapsulation of what we're going to talk about today? And then let's break it down into some bite-sized pieces. We're going to make it consumable and easy for you guys to bite your teeth into this. So we're going to come with three strategies for you today, three actionable strategies to help you be creative with your marketing and lead generation. But just to encapsulate that, what is the solution from a mindset, from a you know, strategic thinking standpoint? Help us to just unpack the mindset behind this a little bit before we get into the tactical three strategies, shall we? For sure. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the, the main things is um, to really just uh, you know, maintain your grit uh, about yourself, right? Really, you, know, you really have to have a strong frame of mind in this business. I think that that's really important. Um, and remain consistent. Things that are working, you need to continue doing. And if something's not working, you need to cut those things. But remain consistent. So, you know, if making your calls every morning is working for you, then continue to do those things, right? Um, I think that, you know, consistency is something that's so easily overlooked, but it's such an important of, you know, our day as, as business owners and, 
and business operators, right? I think mm. that um, honestly, it's really the cornerstone of everything. To be quite honest, is is really just that consistency. It's you know, it's so easy for us to start going in this, making the calls, doing the actions, having the meetings, doing the activities. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get flooded with business and then we do all the business and then all of a sudden we're not busy again. And then we're back to square one and stumble again. So I think consistency is the key. And um, there's definitely some tricks to that one too. Uh, but certainly, you know, consistency is a big one. So uh, working on the right activities is going to be really important. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think oftentimes people have the inclination to always looking for the next bright, shiny object, right? And they're just squirreling, chasing these bright, shiny objects. Squirrel, right? And it's like, what's new? What's fresh? What's exciting? What's the next big thing, the next new thing? And they lose sight of what they need to be consistent with that never gets old. That's the tireless, relentlessly productive fundamentals of their success that they never have to worry about going out of style. That's right. It's like there's some things in our business that aren't like bell bottoms. They don't go out of style. They're always in style. They always work. We might need to tweak them a little bit, maybe do a little buff and shine on them, maybe give them a little upgrade. But the fundamentals of success are generally pretty immutable. They're pretty timeless. And so we don't want you guys to become these crack addicted, uh, brand addicted rats that are constantly chasing after the next big thing to the neglect of what really is the foundation of your success, which is that consistency with the fundamentals. So as we dive in today, we're going to continue to bring back that theme of the fundamental, the fundamentals, because the fundamentals of the basic blocking and tackling of lead generation and lead conversion, they never really change. It's always the same thing. It's all about building trust, building rapport, building authority, building that positioning as an expert, as an authority in your expertise, referrals, third-party endorsement, having someone else give you the credibility versus you trying to build it for yourself, consistency in follow-up, consistency in having these simple fundamentals daily of cultivating relationships with clients, with partners. Those things do not change. But we can be creative on the nuances on how we're approaching your day-to-day -day prospecting that makes you stand out, that makes you the welcome guest versus the annoying pest, that makes you a breath of fresh air, someone that people want to hear from, listen to, follow. And that is the little hinge that swings open big doors to big breakthroughs is that little tweak on how you're approaching your marketing, your prospecting, your lead generation. So let's talk about that. We have three strategies we're going to give you guys today. Let's dive into the first one. We've kept people on their toes long enough. They're on the edge of their seat. They're ready for the three strategies, Penny. Give us without necessarily having them in a particular order of the most important to the least important. Which one do you think would be a good place to start in terms of uh, the strategies for creative prospecting that every mortgage pro needs to know at such a time as this? Well, I think my favorite one is talking about building new referral sources and using your daily hour of power to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, my favorite number, number one strategy. Hour of power sounds good, but if it has to do with cold calling gag, right? Who wants to do that? So I can imagine some people right now are like, oh, there's a mix of good and bad in there. I like the idea of new referral sources, fresh, something different, but daily hour of power, that sounds like discipline, Penny. Help me to embrace not only the new, but also the old as you roll this out. Okay. Okay. Very good. Still. So, <laughs> excellent. So when it comes to building new referral uh, relationships as mortgage professionals, we often think about, you know, uh, real estate agents as being our number one go-to. And that is absolutely true. They should always be your number one go-to. Uh, those are, it's like a marriage almost, you know, real estate 
professionals and mm-hmm. mortgage pro, they're like, they're meant to be together, right? Because you can't buy a house with a mortgage in most cases, right? Unless you're independently wealthy. So right. in this case, they're really meant to be together. But when we see changes and shifts in markets, you know, we have to remember too that there's other opportunities there, right? So, uh, and what I mean by that is there are other people that service homeowners or even would be homeowners. So thinking about people are uh, divorce attorneys, um, financial planners, accountants, even uh, local contractors, roofers, pool uh, installers, right? And those yeah. like one professions service almost exclusively to homeowners, right? Or people that would be homeowners. So uh, it's not very often someone hires a local contractor if they don't already own a home, right? You're not renovating a basement if you're a rent. So, um, and the same thing goes with, you know, divorce attorneys, financial planners, et cetera. Many of them are dealing almost, almost exclusively with homeowners or would be homeowners, people that are in positions to be buying homes. They're great people to up with. So just a little bit of sort of thinking outside of the box. Um, thinking there is about working towards building relationships, uh, with these different professions, right? So sometimes we get in that uncomfortable thing of, you know, oh, I'm nervous to call, get on the phone and, and spend an hour doing outbound phone calls to, you know, uh, I mean, the same realtors that I call every week, maybe make some new calls, reach out to some new professions, right? They might be pleasantly surprised to hear from you. Maybe they're not already hearing from other mortgage professionals. It's shocking how many times, you know, mortgage professionals, we just don't sometimes think of that. We do have our core cultural partners, absolutely, and they are the most important to us. But in a tricky market, it's important to expand. Absolutely. And some people might think, well, why would I go after a partner that can send me maybe one, two, three deals a year when I can go after a partner that can send me one, two, three deals a month? And we get that. We're all about that. We're strong proponents of taking the shortest path to the cash. We are not fans of doing it the hard way. If you guys have been listening to this podcast for more than a day, you know that to be true. So we certainly want to advocate for having the highest leverage, highest capacity sources, sending you the most amount of business and making that a top priority. And consider that by diversifying outside of, for example, top producing realtors who indeed have the highest capacity to send us the most amount of business most often and doing it in a way where it's a tank filler, it's an energy filler, it's a battery charger for you. It's the type of collaboration, synergy, partnership that really charges you. And it's the type of businesses or partnerships that you feel excited about working with such that it feels like a get to versus a have to And you're able to generate additional business, additional leads, buyers, sellers through those channels. Guess what? You can turn around now and feed those buyers and sellers to your top producing realtors, which locks them in with even more loyalty, puts you into even more of a power position because you got to be knowing most of your competitors are not doing that for their realtor partners, right? That's right. So the other really important part of the puzzle to consider is it's like, it's not either or, it's both. Let's do both. And you got, or you, you don't want to make your minimums your maximums. You might be thinking, well, Dorn, how am I going to do all this in one hour of power? Well, if you don't think you could build your realtor team, dream team, as well as your diversified other creative marketing uh, partnerships outside of that category with one hour, do two hours, two hours of power. We're not saying one or the other, we're saying both. So this is not about the neglect to top producing realtors, this is about and top producing realtors and some creative prospecting. Another really interesting topic or rather category of referral partners is relocation agencies. Uh, a lot of military, uh, a lot of you know different professionals, maybe even IT, but certainly military, uh, they bounce around a lot. I think uh, the yeah. police, uh, police officers can be like that too. They, they move around a lot. So or, when you don't, move, I was military moves in my career yeah i I used to be i used to live in a city near a base and so uh brokerage i worked for had a contract with the military base so i literally helped thousands of military families move across the country all of their postings all over it's a phenomenal source and opportunity 
to help military. Absolutely. Yeah. And how many mortgage folks think about, well, let me go after relocation agencies that work with military to be the one that helps these you know, veterans or military or active duty military get into their home of their dreams. And to obviously do that, they're going to need a mortgage. Most of these people are not financially independent. They're going to need a mortgage. There's also certainly in the States, but I can imagine uh, in many locations, both in the US and Canada, there's creative loan programs or military personnel that fit for their particular situation. So there's like a niche, right? There's riches and niches. The great thing about this is when you start to go after these types of partnerships that are outside of the traditional real estate professionals, mortgage or rather real realtors, uh, what you're going to notice is the psychology is pretty much the same. They're all dialed into the same station, which is WIIFM. What's in it for me? So when you learn how to crack the code on attracting top producing realtors, which are the highest demand partnership category that everyone and their dog's chasing after right now for obvious reasons, as rates have been up for the last two and a half years, they've been pounded. Their door's getting pounded daily. So that's a big reason why Smart Ambitious Growth by the Mortgage Pros hire us at Planet Prosper at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is to crack that code to become the welcome guest versus the annoying pest and to be able to do it where you're dialing into their station. What's in it for me? such that you're able to attract versus chase and to be able to do that where you're in the power position, you hold the cookie. They need you more than you need them. How's that for flipping the script, right? Game changer. And obviously not an easy code to crack. But do you think, now obviously you already know the answer to this, Penny, but I'm going to ask a kind of a rhetorical question. Do you think if someone was to crack the code on doing this with the most challenging category of referral partners, which is top producing realtors, do you think they might be able to use the same logic, the same skill, the same mindset, the same basic recipe and tweak it five degrees to make it effective for any other referral partner category, whether it be financial planner, accountant, relocation agencies, divorce attorneys, et cetera? Do you think that might be a, just a slight possibility? All day long, Doran, all day long. <laughs> all day long in some days, right? Uh, so this is a skill, guys, a skill you must learn if you want to thrive versus just survive, if you want to win in any market versus just in a fair weather market. So it's not just about having the daily discipline of your hour of power for booking appointments with realtors and other referral sources. It's not just about having that as a discipline that you do with Activity. It's important that you have an approach that increases the odds that it turns into fraud activity, which means you need to have an approach with a killer unique value proposition such that they're picking up what you're putting down and they're wanting to meet with you. They, they're receptive. They're open because no one else is coming with this kind of a value proposition. You're a breath of fresh air to them. So let's talk about that, Penny. Maybe that might be one of your strategies. I don't know, but how do we bring that value such that they actually want to speak with us, that they want to meet with us, that they want to partner with us? Well, maybe that could even bring us right to strategy number two. Even. <laughs> maybe, right? Maybe that has to do with the next strategy. So it very well could. <laughs> no order stealing your thunder, so I'll let you give it to him. Let's do that. So strategy number two is create a VIP preferred partner list. So this one is a fun one. I've done this before as well, uh, and it has worked beautifully. This is where you get to highlight uh, your VIP Rolodex of preferred partners um, and share them with your clients. The nice thing about this is you are the one that gets to go out and you get to vet local businesses. So it saves your clients a ton of time because instead of them, you know, every time they want to find a local business, maybe they need to install new windows in their home or maybe it's even they want to find a new restaurant to go to or something, you know, some some sort of local business that they want to find. Um, if you do the vetting for them by searching out these local businesses, going to these local businesses, having conversations with the local businesses and asking them if they'd like to be on your preferred partner list, um, which 
The answer is always yes. It's free advertisement for that business. I've never had a business say no to this one. Right. Certainly, you know, uh, you do the vetting. So, of course, you're going to find the best businesses locally uh, to provide these services, whether it's, you know, windows, doors, fencing, basement renovation, could be anything, any sort of local service uh, that's helpful to homeowners. And when you find these businesses, uh, you then are able to add them to your preferred partner list. And one of the nice bonuses to doing this is as you're creating this list, which you get to share with your client base, as you're building this list, you're actually going out and you're speaking with lots of local businesses and lots of local business owners. And I will tell you, most of those business owners are homeowners. Or they're you would. Or maybe they want to buy a rental property, or maybe they want to even buy the commercial building that they're in. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to find a transaction or two just simply by going out to these local businesses and asking, you know, hey, would you like to get on my preferred partner list? It's the conversation when you walk into a business and say, hey, I want to share your name with my roster of clients. How does that sound to you? You know, they'll never kick you out of their storefront or you know, out of their business, they'll never kick you out and say, no, don't advertise my business. Don't help me get sales. It's not a thing, right? They absolutely love that. And it's very welcome. And it it opens up the doors to some great conversations. So it can be a wonderful way to generate leads uh, for your clients, but also just through the businesses themselves, right? The conversations you have with, with uh, the business owners. Um, but certainly once you that list and you share it with your clients, it will also get your phone ringing too, because it's going to give your clients ideas. They're going to go, you know what? We've been thinking about finishing the basement. Maybe we should call our mortgage pro and see if we can, you know, add a little money to our mortgage and do that refinance we've been talking about uh, because we want to finish that basement, right? Um, and so it opens the doors to conversations and it's a helpful tool uh, to your client base. So um, and it also opens doors too. If you do want to have conversations with your local real estate partners too and say, Hey, do you want to get on my list? I'm going to be one of my top three referral sources on my, re- my preferred partner list. Here's how you can get on that list. Right. So it's another great tool for you to just open the door or to be able to have a conversation with, uh, realtor partners. And again, being. Uh, what's the word, Doran? Uh, not the annoying pest. It's the welcome guest. We an idol. <laughs> we all want to be the welcome guest. None of us wants to be the annoying pest, right? Yes. So it's and, a great, easy welcome. And certainly a huge breakthrough in call reluctance that we all have a proclivity to if we feel like we're coming to get and we kind of have that sheepish tail between our legs feeling like, sorry to pester you or annoy you. Uh, That feeling is not a good feeling. That's called putting the brakes on versus throttling up. And if you want to get off the runway into the jet stream, into your dream, you definitely can't afford to be pressing on the brakes. You got to be full throttle. And so what a great way to be able to go full throttle in your prospecting when you feel like you're bringing something value to people, that you are bringing light, love, leadership, and leads for people. Like, What a beautiful thing to be a conduit of contribution in that way. It reminds me, it's kind of like B&I, right? Business Networking International. It's all over the world. People pay money to be the number one person in each particular category. There's one realtor, one financial planner, one mortgage pro, et cetera, et cetera. And you show up and you eat powdered eggs every Wednesday at 7 a.m. And you do your little 60-second infomercial. And then you get a bunch of crappy leads that don't convert because these people can only know so many people for so long before they start to run dry. And you're going through the emotions of doing this. uh, And while you can certainly get business from it, you're just a cog in the wheel. You're not the head. You're not the leader. You might be the leader. Chances are, if you're the leader of the group, you're going to get more leads than if you're a replaceable cog in the wheel. But nonetheless, it's kind of watered down. I mean, you've got like massage therapists and you you got a really watered down list. What I love about this strategy is you can make it custom tailored to real estate. So you can have it be a VIP real estate preferred vendor list that's totally related to 
what does your client need or want in terms of patronizing businesses or professionals before, during, or after they work with you? What are those other professionals? And what if you were to create a dream team, a VIP Rolodex of these vetted partners, and now you're able to be the hub versus just a cog in the wheel? Because you're the creator of this group. You're the head of the dream team. How much more power does that give you to bring value to your clients, value to your partners, and be that conduit connector where people are connecting with best the best? Not only that, cross-pollinating because you put on VIP events for your uh, VIP partner list and you get them connecting, you get them partnering together, you get them collaborating. And guess what? Who, who they have to thank for that? You, because you brought them together. You're the connect, right? This is one of the things you're really brilliant at. This is one of your superpowers, your zone of genius, Penny. You're an amazing connector. You have this beautiful, bright light that shines so bright that people want to be in your energy orbit. You bring value wherever you go. You connect people with other people that bring value to people who need whatever that person offers, whether that be just a relationship, specialized knowledge, particular product or service. Like You're an amazing connector. And one of the reasons I think why you're so good at it is there's an energy that you bring, an intention that you bring. And I don't know if that's nature or nurture or both, but it feels like it's not just because you were born that way. There's a certain muscle you've cultivated to be able to make that in a purposeful, intentional way of life for you. Can you kind of unpack perhaps something that you never thought of as like a one, two, three playbook for being a connector? Can you maybe? Uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but unpack if someone's not a natural connector, but they want to be one like you are, what would be in that playbook that would help them to become uh, more effective in bringing value in relationships such that building this Rolodex becomes so much more fruitful, so much faster? What are your thoughts on that? That's a great question. Um, so I think that's such, such kind words, by the way, Doran, thank you so much. Yeah, but it's all true. That helps too. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, so I think some of the things that really stand out for me when it comes to connecting people, in all honesty, is just, I meet people all the time and I love to listen to people. I love to listen to what they're saying. And I really try to pin out their needs in what we say. So someone is talking about something that they need, whether it be their personal life, their business life, you know, or otherwise, um, I'm really always listening. Like, do I know someone else that could help in that situation? And so I'm always, I'm, I'm always playing sort of a matchmaker almost. It's like, it's like mm-hmm. Tinder for business or something. <laughs> you are I'm up. Look to you up. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm thinking like, okay, this person needs this and this person needs that. And I'm like, but if I put them together, you know, this would work beautifully, right? And so also keeping in mind the energies that people have as well, right? So I'm thinking, well, this person and this person would probably get along really well. You know, and sometimes I'm also thinking this person would probably do really well with this person, but I don't know if their personalities would match. So I'm going to find somebody else instead. And so it's literally like, like business matchmaking, you know, it's like swiping for some of these people, you know, on their behalf, basically, or swiping left. I don't know, because I don't do dating apps, but uh, I've been married for way too long for any of that. You and I both, you and I both. I was a lion or a girl. Yeah. But, um, but I hear about them. So, but anyways, um, yeah, when I think about it, that's, that's really the big piece to that puzzle, I think, is just really being a good listener to understand where people's strengths are, where their weaknesses are, understanding what their needs are. Um, and by listening to them, that's a big piece of the puzzle, right? 
Um, and then after that, it's going out and playing that matchmaker game, which is fun. So that's, that's the fun part of it, right? Because I'm thinking like, I love to be a problem solver. Problem solving is one of my favorite things to do, right? And yeah, so, why you're here helping audience solve their problems with their business, right? Yeah. You learned to do it in your business. Now you want to pay it forward. That's right. Exactly. So I really love the, the problem solving um, aspect to it. And so if I'm able to help someone find, you know, that next solution to whatever the conundrum is, then, then that's very fulfilling for me. So that's beautiful. I think that, that that's really the trick being the good listener and then playing the Tinder matchmaker. <laughs> right. And about just, yeah, no, and we're talking about real meaningful connections that, you know, the gift from giving, right? Not just a flash pen, which is, That's I think, great. a big part of the vetting process is making sure it's like a five-star experience for people. So not only are we saving people the hassle of having to search over and over and over again and going through a bunch of duds before they find the studs, you know, they can go straight to a five-star vendor that's an absolute rock star, thanks to Penny or thanks to you, because you did the vetting first, talk about all the time that's saved, all the hassle, all the lemons and landmines they were able to avoid because you have a handpicked, vetted, VIP partner list, a million dollar Rolodex of VIP partners that you're able to plug your clients into, plug your partners into, and everyone wins. It's that rising tide that raises all the boats, as we like to say. Yes. So that's beautiful. I love that idea. In fact, I think I've been reading your mail in advance without knowing it because my daughter has this budding little business because she's an artist. She does face painting and she wants to get more face painting gigs. She's like, Daddy, how can we get, how can I get more gigs, more clients? I said, Well, we need to reach out to other businesses that also cater to kids. So we made this list and I said, Okay, there's the list. There's the phone numbers. Hit her patter. Time to get at her. Get cracking. Go get him, Tiger. She's like, Dad, you show me how it's done. Of course, I mean, she's a really good delegator. So I'm like, okay, I'll show you. I'll demonstrate. I'm not going to do it forever, but I'll demonstrate. So I just start smiling and dialing uh, these, you know, event planners and companies that cater to kids, kitty clothing and kitty toys and all this sort of thing. And I reach out to them and I basically say, hey. This is Dorn Aldana Cohen from facepaintingbliss.com. We're the number one rated Kamloops face painter uh, on Google. And right now, uh, we're vetting, we're looking for other complimentary businesses that also cater to kids, uh, building out our VIP partnership program where we're helping to promote and endorse our VIP partners to families with young kids so that we can help each other grow our respective businesses. Have you ever done collaborative marketing like that? Are you open to having a conversation? More often than not, they're like, absolutely. So that's basically what, we're, what you're talking about, right? Absolutely. That's and exactly it. It's just as simple as is getting on the phone. Is it a little nerve wracking? Yeah. Even for me, I do this for a living. I train people on how to do this for a living. I was still a little nervous. Dude, you know, My daughter's listening to me and I'm being put at the hot spot, right? And nevertheless, it's like once you get going with it, it's like, hey, this is not so bad. I can do this. So the key is just start. The key to success is just get going, just get started. That's half yeah. the battle. So let's say now we're, we've got the, the first strategy, which is the hour of power or building these new referral partnerships. We've got the second strategy, which is building this VIP vetted Rolodex of preferred partners. What's the third thing that we every mortgage pro needs to know when it comes to creative prospecting that we, we'd be remiss not to share before we sign off today? All right. So the third strategy, operation collaboration. So Operation collaboration. I like the sounds of that. Anymore. Got it. Yes. So this one is about uh, collaborating with people that are like-minded like you businesses that are complementary like yours. So very much like what you were talking about with your daughter and with partnering up with other similar complementary businesses, doing collaborations, right? So this is how you can become a leader 
uh, within your community by doing these collaborations. This can help you get uh, FaceTime with the other person's audience. And it also allows them to get FaceTime with your audience. By doing collaborations together, you're expanding your reach to new audiences and mm-hmm. being able to uh, create more leads simply by expanding your audience reach very, very quickly, right? So for example, if you have, um, let's, a realtor partner that you want to do a joint social media post or post or something like that with, um, you can do that social media. You can do collaborations through social media. And so as soon as you do a collaboration, if they've got 500 followers and you've got 500 followers, you've now just shared that post to a thousand followers instead of just your 500 followers, right? You just doubled your audience in one social media, just like that, right? And so collaboration, absolutely priceless. They're, they're wonderful, right? And uh, one of my favorite collaborations, nothing mortgages, but it's it's the Taco Bell and Doritos collaboration. I mean, it's a it's a classic, right? You know, it's Doritos had nothing to do with Taco Bell, but when they came together and they created the Dorito Taco, or I never ha- I don't know, <laughs> never ha- But I do know I remember the commercials. I- yeah, it's indelibly on your mind. Yeah, they had like the Dorito. French taco or something like that, but the red drew attention. It did. It drew a lot of attention to the Dorito brand um, via Taco Bell, right? And by first, well, and then Doritos did the same thing, right? And so, because they did those collaborations, it expanded both of their audiences, which was fantastic, right? It's just how to increase your reach. Um, very, very quickly. Like it's literally instantaneous, right? So that is absolutely great. Right. Double your audience just like that in an instant. Yeah. And again, reading your mail with that with my daughter, apparently, because we reached out to these, you know, potential partners at the time. They were just a name on a list, but we were reaching out and we found other complimentary businesses just by making these prospecting calls. One was an event planner. And she's always putting on birthday events for these relatively well-to-do families because who pays for an event planner for their kid unless they got money? And so my daughter offers to do free face painting for the first event just to show off how awesome she is. Right. Collaboration, right? It adds value to an event that the planner's already doing. It adds sparkle. It adds wow factor. Yep. It makes the event planner look amazing. It brings lots of delight to everyone in the room. And certainly increases the odds of repeat and referral business and rave reviews for the event planner. It's zero expense for my, for the event planner and just a little time for my daughter. Yeah. And of course, once they're wowed, like we like to say here on Planet Prosper, once they get a taste of great, they're never going to want to settle for good. Yeah. So that's another way that you can approach this is like, what can you do to make it a slippery slope? Like a super easy yes. Can you offer some kind of a, you know, endorsement where you have them on your podcast and you interview them and you're, you're bringing promotional power to their brand and you give them exposure. It's no expense to them. Can you create some kind of an educational guide or a PDF or an educational resource that they can promote to their prospects online or to their database uh, of past clients by email, by social media, by text? Can you put on some kind of a webinar or a live seminar or a lunch and learn, and you already have the PowerPoints and they just show up and collab with you and you promote it to your list. They promote it to their list. Maybe you both chip in 500 bucks and you co-promote on social media with some paid ads. But notice how it's like you're leading, you're not following, you're leading the way. So those are the sorts of things you want to think about when it comes to operation collaboration is like, what can you do to lead, not just follow, but lead? Lead in the creative thought process. Lead with an education-based marketing approach. Lead with an opportunity for them to partake in operation collaboration where you've helped to expand their business with a cool creative fusion marketing opportunity. And the more you get going with this and the more you build muscle and momentum with this, you're never going to want to stop because there's just so many different ways to collaborate. And uh, the more you collaborate, the more you're going to elevate. It's as simple as that. The sky truly is the limit. So 
We've covered a lot of ground today. We're up on time, but let's just quickly recap. Creative prospecting, finding leads where others aren't looking. That's what we've been talking about today. Strategy one is build a new referral sources with a daily hour of power. Strategy two is create a VIP partner list where you can have a million dollar Rolodex to plug your clients and partners into with five star vendors. And strategy three is operation collaboration. The more you collaborate, the more you elevate. So I hope you guys found some value in this. Uh, again, the most important referral partnership is and always will be top producing realtors. We know that to be true. Of course, that doesn't happen by default. It happens by design. If you think you just show up with a pulse, you know, fog a mirror and think that's going to be enough to attract top producing realtors, you've only been in the business for about one hour because that's called delusional optimism if you've been in the business for more than that. And certainly flies in the face of what we know to be true. These top producing realtors have been pounded. So you've got to be creative. You've got to bring unique value. And you've got to attract versus just chase. So chasing other referral sources to the neglect of successful top producing realtors, frankly, is indeed stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. We don't recommend doing that. This is an and versus an either or. But we certainly want to make sure you're making that a mission critical piece, a cornerstone of your marketing. And if you want to learn the secret sauce on how to attract top producing realtors without inflicting yourself with begging, bribing, cold calling, or kissing butts, and you are a residential mortgage pro on 100% commission, earning 70 basis points or higher, and you want to add at least $100,000 to your annual income, and you want to work smart versus just working hard, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. You'll hop on the phone with me or one of my consultants. We'll just have an honest conversation about where you're at and where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business and take it to that next level, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. And if not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. So this is not a sales call. This is a clarity call to see where you're at, where you want to be and determine if we can help you. And if we can, we'll show you what that looks like. If we can't, we'll direct you to something else. That sound fair? If it does, and if it is, I certainly recommend booking a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. And if you got value from today, if you got something valuable that you feel was worth your time here today, please like, comment, share this episode with your peers and colleagues. Remember, sharing is caring. And if you feel that we deserve a five-star review, please do. It helps us reach more awesome mortgage pros just like you. Penny, thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate you. I so appreciate the brilliance, uh, the practicality, and the amazing simplicity of what you bring to not only these episodes, having you here as a co-partner on this podcast, Art of Mortgage Marketing, but I love the fact that you're expansive in your energy when it comes to leading by example with this. It's not just theory or hype or fluff or BS. It's stuff you actually live. And I love the congruence of how you live this authentically by example, because that's one of the things that makes me want to follow you is this stuff is just who you are. It's not just ideas that you think might be you know, viable. It's true, honest, authentic congruence with who you actually are and what you do and the results you've gotten. So appreciate you leading by example. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I love sharing these ideas. Thank you. Well, we love having you as a co-host. I'll tell you what, you know, it's like, it's one thing to have me doing this on my own, but there's a multiplier effect you bring. And the synergy we have with operation collaboration has definitely brought next level value to this podcast. I've seen it in the comments already. People are loving it. So I trust guys, if you dig it, just know we got a whole lot more in store. We're just getting warmed up. And it is truly an example of the multiplier effect. One plus one equals not just three, but a multiplier effect. It's not public school math, y'all. It's power of operation collaboration. So thank you for investing your valuable time with us today. Remember, the more you grow, the more your income grows. So don't just go to that next level. Let's grow to that next level, shall we? Penny, thanks again. Appreciate you. Thank you. 
Thanks for being with us, guys. See you on the next episode.